Okay. Let's do it up. Here we go. All right, we got a lot of new products this week, so buckle up. First up, it's a rectangle. <laughs> no, this is. We bring you rectangle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Much better than square. No, this actually is, is, is square. Um, what is this? This is a carbon filter. It's those foamy, carbony inserts that you get in your um, soldering fume filters, and now we just have just the filter. So, yeah. if you picked up one of the fans that we have from the store, and you want to add a filter, not just a fan, but you can absorb um, smells. Uh, this is it. It's very standard. It fits in almost all off-the-shelf um, soldering, uh, solder fume extractors. I can also show them overhead. Comes in Adafruit black. Comes in black. You know, it's it's kind of thick. Uh, it's really easy to cut. So if you need a different shape, cut it up. Uh, a lot of people seem to like making custom 3D printed. Fume extractors, I've seen a couple from mint tins. Um, you'll want this as well, that'll always help. Especially if the fan isn't that strong, this will absorb and keep the smoke from just going straight through and then it's still in the room. Okay. And it's also square. Next up. Battery holder. This is pretty much what it looks like. You get four AA batteries, you put them in and then you get a 2.1 millimeter DC jack. It's a standard center positive 2.1 millimeter. So it works with just about anything. A lot of projects need about, you know, four and a half to six and a half volts. This will provide it for you and you can use alkalines or rechargeable batteries. So a great way to make your project portable. And you no longer have to solder on the DC jack. It comes with it already. Okay. Next up. Okay. We have two of these micro bit connectors. These are custom made micro bit connectors specifically for the micro bit. And I'll show them on the overhead. We have two versions. One is this right angle version. They're both surface bent, but one, you know, the this fits flat on the board and the micro bit is parallel to the board. And we also have this, which is the vertical version. This sits um, perpendicular to the board and the micro bit sticks up. And I will show you this? both because it's worth yes. showing both. Yes. Yeah. yeah, two versions, yes. same price, different alignment. So this is um, the right angle version. Actually, this is used in a bunch of uh, Pimeroni um, uh, bit adapter thingies. So in this case, you plug it in. What's nice is it fits very well. And this is an SMT connector, so you can solder it very easily. Another nice thing is it only has contacts on one side. And you can kind of see there's, even though it's an 80 contact connector, 40 contacts on each side, this side of the micro bit, they're not actually connected. These are, these are just like there, but they're not used. Um, so this way, if you put it in backwards, or even, you know, if you put in four, four words, you don't have to pay for those extra connectors. Like usually you would pay for every contact, but since only half of them are used, you only have 40 contacts and you don't have to pay as much. So these are, you know, much more compact connectors than the through hole ones that we've stuck before. So this is the right angle one. So again, it goes flat on the board and this plugs in with the LEDs and buttons pointing up. And then we also have this one which has um, uh, smaller pads and um, these dots for securing. Check the data sheet for the connection. And then let me see, the contacts are on this side. So for this, it plugs in like so. We actually were using this on our upcoming micro bit Cricut. So you can see this plugs in very nicely and sits perpendicular to the board, very well connected. And it's a really good uh, surface mount connector. Um, Really easy to solder, really easy to place, and not very big, which I like. It's a very slim connector. So uh, two great ways to connect your micro bit to a custom circuit board. Good okay. Next up. This is amazing. It's a little hard to explain now. So yeah, it's, it's a $100 screwdriver, but let me tell you, this is so worth it. Um, this screwdriver has a... Uh, uh, you know, a, a high torque motor inside and an IMU, and it can detect which way you're moving your wrist. And so you don't have to, like in the text version, like you don't have to turn a screw like a, like a barbarian. You just flick your wrist one way or the other, and it will automatically detect which way it is, and the motor will turn in that direction. So again, it's a little tough to explain, so let me demo it. 
So you got this nice stainless steel body. It's even got, you know, CEFCC -E and it's Creative Commons. Um, there's this button and this screw that tells you like the battery level, you can charge it over a micro USB port in the end. So if you hold the button and you twist it, see it turns in that direction. And then if I hold it and I twist in the other direction, it'll twist in the other opposite direction. So as I'm screwing or unscrewing parts, you just kind of like flick your wrist in that direction. This is amazing when you're putting together a bunch of parts. Um, when we were using this, maybe I'll you know, demonstrate it with um, the Cricut. We were putting together so many of these and it's just so easy to really quickly um, do up all these terminal blocks and attach crickets to screws. Um, it's got a good torque, but it won't strip. Like after it hits the limit, like right now it's at the limit, it will just stop. So um, it comes with two bits. It comes with a flat head bit and a um, Phillips bit and then like a nice little container and it has a little bit holder here. But you're probably wondering, man, I want some other bits. Well, this set that we carry, it's a standard, it's a standard, um, a standard size screw um, attachment. So you can see if you get these standard like hex screws in a kit, either from your local hardware store or this kit that we stock, you know, you can um, do torque wrenches or Allen wrench or triangle or star or whatever and um, so if you need more different bits to go with it that's how I recommend you do it just because it only comes with two and you might want more options so this is totally a sonic screwdriver for the ages you're gonna love this um, it is more expensive than a plain screwdriver but if you're doing a lot of uh, taking apart stuff assembling stuff you're you're not gonna get wrist frustration or I get cramps in my wrist if I'm constantly torquing yeah I'd say for robotics especially it's pretty good yeah, it's it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and also, like, always do the calculation. Like, time is money. If you're if you're a consultant or doing contract work, or if you're doing things like this, speeds you up. Also, some people who like they have arthritis, so they don't have full mobility in their wrist. This is great. You spend just have to on, hold on to it. On Motrin or spend it on a screwdriver. Okay, but I really recommend it. I know it's. I know people are like it's expensive, but believe me, this yeah, it's worth it. It's a great, really great device. Okay. Yeah, we tested here. We use it all through. A lot of cricket robotics and more. Okay, what's this? Mm. This is a mini. It looks a lot like an Adafruit board, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's an um, it's the Esperino Breakout. So we love carrying the Esperino boards. This is JavaScript on a microcontroller. They recently ported Esperino to the NRF52832. Again, a wonderful chip. And we put the Pixel JS in the store a couple weeks ago, um, which is like an Arduino shape, and it has you know you can plug in Arduino compatible shields. Um, there's an LCD in the back, but maybe you're like, I don't want something that big. I want something small that I can embed into a project. This is it. It's, um, this photo, this photo shows it better than the overhead. It's basically got the module on it. It's got a button and it has two LEDs and all the pins broken out. You can use web Bluetooth to program it, or you can connect to the RX and TX ports. It's a little bit more for advanced people because again, you have to, um, solder to it if you want to use it in a breadboard. Uh, it's not as plug and play, but it's got Esperino on it and it works great. We we just love all this JavaScript stuff. Um, we decided to go with, with Python for a lot of our projects, but I totally respect and understand that JavaScript is a, a also incredibly popular language for especially web developers. Now you can use all that stuff you've learned in web development and make hardware with it. Okay. Teeny Next, hardware. Uh, the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, and the community out there, is this. Yay! It's another Featherwing powered by Seesaw. It's a teeny RGB TFT. I actually got these RGB TFTs many months ago and I was meaning to get around to make a feather wing. Finally finished that off. So this is the a Seesaw feather. And as you see here, it comes with a full color 160 by 80 screen. It's very small, only 0.96 inch diagonal, but it's 180 by 60 pixels, which is pretty good. Um, maybe it's 160 by 80. It also comes with a five way joystick and two buttons as well as a reset button. Um, and the five-way joystick plus two buttons, those seven GPI are handled by Seesaw so that you don't have to spend any extra GPI, especially on something like an ESP8266 or 32. You may want to save those GPIO for something. Um, you need SPI and I squared C plus two pins, but that's it to control uh, all of the user interface and display. 
I can show it on the overhead. One thing that's worth noting is all the companies that are using Feather as their form factor, they, they made out because, they are, because there's totally unending accessories coming out of Lady Ada for Feather. And yeah. so from Particle to the Maxim folks to a lot of the companies, um, some we can't talk about yet because we know secrets, Shh. but um, it looks like Feather is if you want to unlock an entire ecosystem of like 200 wings, um, just make it follow the spec and you get that. You follow the spec, you get so, all these wings. And so, and there's more coming. I mean, like, yeah, got, there'll be more announcements about other. It's yeah. not out yet. So, yeah. uh, stay Anyways. tuned. So, um, okay. show on the so, overhead. So, yeah, it's, it's got this color screen. It's actually got pretty good. Pardon me, visibility, and it's pretty bright. Um, the pixels are quite small, so like you'll see, like you know, it's drawing text, but it's it's very hard to see. You got two buttons, and then this joystick goes left, right, up, down. It's like a little nav switch, and then you can select in. Oh, now I take it apart. It's got this seesaw chip that does all that for you. It also manages the backlight. Um, and then on the back, you can see it uses SPI and I squared C. And then you get to choose two CS and DC pins for the TFT. Everything else is managed through else is managed with the seesaw. We're loving the seesaw. We're gonna we're cramming it into so much stuff lately. Everyone's just like it's a seesaw party. Why? Because uh, you know these Cortex M Zero chips are really inexpensive and can do all of your uh, GPIO management for you all over I squared C and it's it's test and proven. I mean the Cricut is seesaw and this is a seesaw on a SAMD09. Yeah. So. If you wanted something a little nicer than our monochrome OLED, monochrome OLED's great, but maybe you want full color and you want a full joystick and buttons, well, we finally have this for you. Okay. Mr. Rose.